Okay, recording. Recording. Okay. Yeah. This this is a meeting of the Hamden Board of this is a meeting of the Hamden Board of Selectmen on October thirteenth, uh, twenty twenty. The the meeting is the this is an open meeting of the Hamden Board of Selectmen as being conducted remotely consistent with the Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current COVID state of emergency. For this meeting, the Hamden Board of Selectmen is convening using Zoom video conferencing as, as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. Is anyone else recording the meeting? May we please all say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, just call the roll, John. I'll just call the roll. John Flynn. Here. Mary Ellen Glover. Mary Ellen. Is she there? Is she muted? She has been admitted. Okay. Uh, let's see if she's muted. Uh, she was. She is muted. Sorry. Okay. Now, <laughs> All right, Mary Ellen. Okay, she's there. It's okay. On you uh, now. Uh, yeah, you're okay. 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 We, can, we can hear you now. Okay, uh, I'm here. Pam, Court Pam Courtney. Uh, Bob Markle's there. I'm here. Okay. Uh, the first, is we do we have any minutes to uh, review? No minutes. <clears throat> so the first item on our open agenda is the appointment of a plumbing inspector. Yes. <clears throat> uh, is There's this a reappointment? Is talking about um, the um, the plumbing inspector. So Wendell is here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is this a new appointment? Is this a new appointment or is it a reappointment? It's a new appointment. Okay. And you're, you're the person you're recommending? Uh, actually, Dennis Chafee Jr. was supposed to be on also. Um, currently, Dennis Chafee Sr. is the plumbing inspector, but unbeknownst to him, I've been negotiating with his son to step in as he just can't do it anymore for health purposes. Um, mm -hmm. it's time for him to step back. He's got other, um, things to take care of. Okay. And how, how does the plumbing, how many, how does the plumbing inspector work? Does he, does, does the, do the, the clients pay him or is he under a salary from the town or how does that work? The plumbing inspector, the electrical inspector, the gas inspector are all paid a percentage of their, uh, um, their fees. Okay. It's how it's been in Hamden since they are, because they're not full-time employees. They're just doing this for the town as kind of almost like a service. Okay. And then they're appointed until further notice until they Correct. They, they usually else. get reappointed every year. Oh, reappointed every year. Okay. And Dennis Jr. is currently serving as the assistant <laughs> Henian, right? What'd you say, John? Dennis well, actually, Jr. is currently... Go ahead, Hobie. Actually, our alternate inspector was uh, a gentleman named Bernie Sears from Wolverhampton, but Bernie's 87 now, and he's decided, I just found out today that he stepped down uh, the beginning of October as well. So I'm trying to fill for Dennis Sr. And then also we have a, a candidate lined up to be the alternate, but first things first. Mm -hmm. And, and, the, and is there any particular qualifications that are necessary? Well, with regards to these guys, they're master plumbers. They've continued with their education. Um, Dennis is still in the field at times, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the education that you have to take to get a master plumber, I think if anybody has tried to find a plumber nowadays, this, the question kind of answers itself. <laughs> They're all about my age. There's no young kids. And I'm just, I feel like we're qualified, um, overqualified at this point when they're, you know, <clears throat> our masters. All right. 
So is there a motion for approval of the appointment? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 John. Okay. Unanimous. Dennis is online. He just can't speak for some reason. He must be uh, muted. muted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know his right, dad's thanks. watching too. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Obi. Thanks. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Uh, and Dennis Senior, thank you for your service. Let's see. I just unmuted Dennis or asked him to unmute. He wants to make a comment. Are you there, Dennis? Says he's he's uh, he's uh, in the meeting. Which? Well, we don't hear him. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Toby. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Linda. Uh, the next the next item on our agenda is ClearGov. An update on ClearGov. We yes, have some uh, representative. And uh, Anna Belcora is here representing ClearGov. I've just unmuted her. Can you see her there? You should no. unmute yourself, Anna. Good okay, evening, now you're good. You? Hi. You're, you're good. Okay, okay, Anna. Go ahead. All right. All right, great. Hi, everyone. Um, as um, I'll mention, I'm Anna. I'm the client success manager that's been working for ClearGov. And um, he asked me to um, join today to just give you an update on how things are going on the page. Um, and things are progressing really well. So we've been able to um, upload your data from your accounting system for the years 2019 to 2020. And right now, we're just working on the historical year so that we can present more years on the page. Um, would you like me to give you like a preview of how it looks like at this time? Yes, please. Love it. All right, great. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Oh, I think I, uh, oh, there you go. Okay. Um, I think <clears throat> the screen sharing is disabled. No. Is there a, um, a setting where we can? Is there, Bob, is there a screen sharing setting? I've just uh, enabled that. Okay. okay, let me give it another try here. All right, perfect. All right, great. Um, can everybody see this? Yes. yes. All right, great. So just to give you an overview of the ClearGov page, um, we present a number of different uh, sets of data on this page, um, starting with demographics, um, which is data coming from the US Census. So you'll be able to see the latest um, census data available for your town. Um, on this page, you can see the demographic snapshot. We show population, median home value, median household incomes. And if you click on this button, you'll be able to see more information such as, um, just taking a while to look, um, household information, uh, like the population um, trending chart here, um, different kinds of household, economic uh, information like household income, housing, and more. Um, but of course, the, uh, the, the important data that we have here is the revenue and expenditure of the town. And currently we have um, it available for different funds. So you can see the different funds, I'm sorry, general fund. Uh, and then we have like an all fund um, available as well. And then if you click on any of these sections, you can drill down and really see the revenues year by year. And like I mentioned right now, we have revenues for 2019 to 2020, and we're working on adding more historical years to the page so that residents can see um, even for a past historical fiscal years. And so you can see here, um, this is the current budgeted data for 2020. If you go to 2019, you can also see um, the budgeted data as well as actual since that's already a completed fiscal year. And residents can see those different revenue sources and really drill down and um, into the different details for each of them. So there's really full transparency here. So you can see 
all the taxes, um, permits and fees, and so on. Uh, excuse me, Anna, uh, I know that there was some difficulty because the town changed accounting systems. Exactly. Are you to use the, the data from the old accounting system that Cliff has provided, that our accountant has provided? Correct. So that's, um, that's why we have to, um, because we're presenting, you know, we're trying to compare your sets of data for different years. Um, right now, we're trying to align it with the data from the older accounting system. Um, but we updated the, uploaded the most recent year so that it's available on the page. And then we'll continue to work on adding the historical data from that old accounting system. The older. Um, mm -hmm. Any questions so far? I can go to the expenditure section next. Go ahead. You will, you will update this periodically on a particular date or, you know, each year? Yes, we can definitely oh. update this. Um, and, um, and we can do this. Uh, we can add the actuals for year to date, either on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis. Or if you prefer to wait until the audited data, we can um, update that at the end of the year once the audited data is, is ready. Thank you. Yes, we can update this um, as often as you want, or if you, we have several different towns in Massachusetts that uh, prefer to do it at the end of the year, while we do have some that uh, prefer to see it updated either on a monthly or quarterly. Okay. Um, but aside from revenue, of course, we also have the expenditures uh, for, for 2020 and 2019. And here you can really see the different expenditures from all the different departments in the town. Um, we start off here at the top with the total budgeted expended to date. And all of these pages will have um, different infographics that are interactive. So residents can go in here, they can highlight a specific section and um, see that information. And then they can also change the view from a pie chart to a bar chart or to a mountain chart. So you can really um, interact with these charts if you wanna see different views. You can even download these charts if you want. So for those that, um, that uh, would like to save this or maybe internally, if you wanna add this into a chart or presentation or add it to your budget book, you can definitely go in here and um, get these charts. And then um, it also breaks it down into those different sections here. So you'll really be able to drill down into the expenditures of each of these departments. So top, <laughs> the top page that we always see visited are public safety and public works. So if you wanna see the public safety breakdown, you can go in here, click view breakdown, and then you can see those different departments under public safety, such as the police, fire, um, building department, animal control, traffic control, emergency management, and so on. And further down here, you can even drill down and see salary information, um, equipment, training, maintenance, everything that goes into that police budget, um, everything that goes into the fire building department animal control budgets. Okay. And then um, last but not the least, there's also debt information. Now this debt information is from, currently it's from the um, the Schedule A that's being submitted to the Department of Revenue, Division of Local Services, but we can also update this if you want it to be more um, comprehensive, because right now we're just displaying it into bigger categories, but if you want to break it down a little bit more, we can uh, we can update this with the, the, the your own data from your accounting system as well and present it in, uh, in, in more detail. Um, but that's the overview of the page. And um, one of the things that we can do as well is once we have all of the rest of the historical years in here, uh, we can also make sure that there's benchmarking available on the page. Um, benchmarking will allow you to compare the town's performance with other towns or other peers that are similar to your town. So that's something that we're also working on and we're gonna add that to the page as soon as the historical data is here. When will, Anna, when will the public be able to access? When will, when will it go live? 
So as soon as, so if you want to go live with just those two years of data, we can definitely do that. And then we can add the historical years later on. Um, so if you're ready to go live with it, we can go ahead and add that to your website. Um, we have a number of different ways that we can add it to your site. We can add a link on there. We can add a banner that our residents will be able to see right away. We can even help you put up some charts. Um, that way residents will be able to see it and then it directs them to this page. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. All right. I like the way you've, you've done it uh, for the Munson webpage. Oh, at the top? Oh, yes, yes, we can definitely show that. I actually prepared some, some options in here. So um, if you want to add it um, as a button in here, you can do that. Um, if you want to add it as, um, where did, so here's an example of a button. If you want to add it as a banner, you can do that too. Um, let's take a look at the town of Munson. I didn't get that up there, but definitely. They, uh, I think they have a very similar, oh, yep, they have a similar website to yours and they put it up as, a, as like an image here. So can definitely work with you on, on where you want it to be placed for easy access and to make sure that residents are able to see it right away and, uh, and visit the page. Okay. Now, explain to me again, how was it updated periodically? Yes. So all we need to update it is just your budget to actual reports from your accounting system, which is Vader. And then our data team is the one that um, uh, uploads it to our database and then it updates all the charts and graphs on the site. Okay. It will, it will update all the charts and graphs. Yes, it will. Okay. So you'll be able to see um, all of these updated. And then if you add more years as well, so let's say if you're ready to share your FY21 budget, um, your year-to-date actuals, all of that data will be layered in. So you're gonna start to see these charts get additional years in them and then the details mm -hmm. will fall. I see, okay. Do you keep data on usage? I'm sorry? Do you keep any data on usage? How many people yes. are using it and when they're using it and what, what are the most used parts yes. of it, stuff like that? Yes, we do. I can provide, um, page view information, and um, that will tell us what's the pages that are being visited the most. Um, specifically, it can even drill down to like which department and you know which page. So we can provide that um, to you as a regular report if you would like to keep track of that. Um, and furthermore, you can also add additional information in here. So if you wanna, um, let's say you wanna share um, kind of additional charts, you can do that as well. I can help you add more information if you'd like kind of to add more. Okay. Let me ask the selectman, would you want to uh, start out by using that blank tab on the home page? That would make more sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would think so. So if you are in touch with me and I, I probably I can't enable that myself. I have to be in touch with the company that provides the service, but that's fairly simple. Sure, yeah. If I you want to do it myself, the... but uh, my guess is that I think they have to enable that. Yes, yes. I've uh, yeah. We could definitely um, with the uh, we've worked with Civic Plus before with their support. So if you want to connect me with them, um, I can uh, I can make sure that they they link it to the right page. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're ready to go live? Oh, me, yes. Yes, I do think yep. that um, the page is ready. Um, one of the things that we can do is just make sure um, the data is updated. If there's any additional actuals that you'd like to add, we can do that to make sure that the, the actuals are, are up to date. Um, and we can definitely just go over the page one more time before we go live. Okay. We get right. monthly reports for actuals, which I can send. Yep. Yeah. We can do that. And then, of course, like I said, we can always add those historical data later if you want to. Um, we found that a lot of the pages visited are really the most recent two, three years. So I think um, with 2019, mm -hmm. 2020, that's really the most relevant. And then if, if you want to add those historical years, we can do that later on. Okay. All right. 
And now, in the comparison with other towns, now is that uh, in, you know each each like line animal, like for police department or for fire department or for sidewalks or. Yes. So basically, um, what we'll do is right now we only have the data um, from your accounting system. Once mm -hmm. you're ready to go live, um, we'll create like a second set of data that only hosts uh, all the data from the Schedule A. So that way you're, uh, you're comparing the data from other towns that were submitted from the Schedule A as well, together with Hampton's Schedule A data. And that allows those comparisons so that you can do it at that level. Like if you wanna, say, if you wanna see um, police department or public works, you can see that comparisons because it's gonna be coming from the same database. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, me board members, are we ready to go live? I think we should. I think we should. Yeah. Okay. All right. When you when you when you put it on the home page, is it going to say what ClearGov is? Are they going to? Is is the public going to know that? They're going to see there's a new entry, but are they going to know the purpose or anything like that or any kind of explanation? Um, so one of the things that we can call it is um, transparency center or financial transparency. So um, I would recommend using that um, instead of it just having saying clear gov. Um, one of the things that we can also do is we can add like text here at the top if you want to provide more information as to what they'll find on the page. Mm -hmm. um, I can help you add that in there. Yeah, that might be good initially so that people will get used to using it. Yeah, sure. We can provide kind of directions on where to go. Um, so I can come up with that that um, text, suggested text for you. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Thank any, you. Any nice job. Questions? So Bob, you'll you'll work with Anna to get this. Uh, I will. And, and we'll also do an announcement uh, on yeah. the home page that provides some explanation as to what ClearGov is about. Okay. And the, this portion of it has been paid for by a grant, right? Right. Uh, yes, the setup and the first year is paid for by a grant from the State Department of Revenue. Okay. And then okay, going that, forward, do and then going forward, do you have a sense of the cost or after um, that? They did provide that. Uh, and I remember it? Uh, was it the uh, three thousand a year, Anna? Anna? Yeah, thereabouts. I can confirm the. Um, I don't have it with me right now, but I can definitely confirm what the um, what the pricing for the for the next year will be. Okay. All right. Well, anything else? No. Okay. Well, thank you, Anna. Thank, thank you. you, Bob, for putting this together, and look forward to seeing it on there. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Yeah, you too. All right. Now, uh, we also have for the next item, let me um, uh, release. Oh, here he is, Elizabeth, where is she? Um, here you are, okay. Hello, everyone. Oh, hi. Okay. Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> you can call me Libby, that's my formal name, but um, <laughs> I go by Libby, so that's fine. She works with Mary Carey uh, from the Collins Center. So I just wanted to give you an update on the status of our project. Um, as you're aware, we're doing a classification and compensation study for the town. And mm -hmm. part of that, um, the most important part is the employee input. And that we get through questionnaires and through interviews. So we are in that process now. And that helps us formulate our job descriptions. Once we formulate our job descriptions and get a good sense of everyone's job duties, then we do a salary comparison to give you an idea of where the town employees in the town of Hampton compare to other local comparable communities. So at this point in time, we've received uh, six questionnaires and completed six interviews. We have also received 14 additional questionnaires those interviews have not yet been conducted. And then we have 13 um, outstanding questionnaires that we are waiting on. Okay. And Bob, do you know who the 13 outstanding are? You don't have to tell us, but we should prod them a little bit. <laughs> Hello? 
Did we lose Bob? <laughs> He's, He's muted. He's muted. I'm muted. muted myself. Uh, yes, I do. Um, I've been twisting arms to get uh, some to uh, complete them and send them in. I know you've gotten you got the library recently, all of the library employees. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a few more. That, uh, the only outstanding library employees I had um, was the library page and the youth services librarian. The, oh, I'm sorry, the young adult ser service librarian. So those two were outstanding. Um, you know, one of the things we can do, because this has taken a little bit of time, it, it's completely up to the town, we can go ahead and for these outstanding positions, we could provide sample job descriptions to the employees. Perhaps that would make it easier for them um, instead of completing the questionnaires. The, there are some positions that are easier to do that with than others. For example, um, you know, some a position such as a tax collector, town clerk, they tend to be somewhat standard by community because um, especially with the town clerk, a lot of job, to, job duties are prescribed by statute. Um, positions where that's not so easy to do are positions that have a lot of flexibility for job duties. And you'll see those types of positions tend to be clerk positions, administrative assistant positions, that sometimes end up being catch-alls. Mm. So having a sample job description for those positions might require a little more editing than others, but that's fine. I mean, whatever really works for your town, we can try to make work for us. We're really here to suit your needs. I do oh. have a chart that you sent just recently, which I'll share with the selectmen. Uh, not, not tonight, but I'll share with them. It shows uh, the positions that uh, they do not have uh, descriptions for. Uh, and we'll-, we'll when, did, when, did, when did we start this process? Do you remember? It's been uh, about four months. I would have to say, I would agree that uh, for some employees, it's true in my company, it's easier to give them a template to work and let them modify that. Some people just aren't familiar with the concept of making a job description. Don, you probably think the same thing. Yeah. I think if you gave them something they could mark up and go from, it's gonna be much easier. I agree with that. Yeah. So we absolutely can do that. Uh, the questionnaire that we send out can be, um, you know, can be overwhelming. It does ask you to identify, you know, your, your top job descriptions, your essential functions. And sometimes it's really difficult for employees to think about and categorize mm -hmm. everything they do during a day. Um, you know, if you think about what you did today or you did yesterday or last month, it's hard to quantify that um, in terms of how much time you spend and whether or not that's an essential function for you. So it might be easier for us to provide sample job descriptions for these employees. And I hope that that would be a conversation starter. They would edit them and return them to us. And then we could have a phone conversation and um, just kind of review it together to get to a place that actually uh, represents what they are doing um, throughout their job. Yeah. Well, I, 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 think we sh I think we should proceed that way. This is a very important thing that we're trying to do because it, it, it'll set really the, the future organization of the town hall, the future organization of the selectmen's meeting, plus, you know, upgrade or, or you know, really adjust people's salaries that need to be adjusted and we can make some budget decisions. So I, I want all the town employees to participate. So whatever we can do to, to you know, enhance that participation, please do. And you know, we're working on a timeline here because we really like to get this done so we can have a reasonable budget to present to the town in May. And I'll be honest with you, the most time consuming part of this project tends to be the salary comparisons, because what we're doing is we're relying on other towns to provide us with information. Yeah. And that can be sometimes pulling teeth. So I'd like to give 
a good amount of time to try to go back and forth with other comparable towns yeah. and allow for that. So that really, we wanna give us enough time to complete that process. Okay. All right, so Bob, it sounds to me like you need to make one more effort to get people to get as many in as you can and then have Elizabeth uh, come up with some template job descriptions for those that are still outstanding. We'll move forward that way. And Libby, do you have a deadline that you would like to receive these by? Uh, I would suggest that we give, well. Two weeks ago, wasn't it? We've gone yeah. through a few deadlines, but. Well, that's, that's the point. If, if we had a real date, we could say to people, you have to have this in by this date. Sometimes that's an impetus to get the task done. So what I would Actually, suggest we did, is that, we did and, and I'll that. defer to Bob, I'm sorry. Or what? Or what? Um, I would suggest a week. Or you're not gonna include it. Go ahead, excuse me. I would suggest a week. And after a week, what we'll do is we'll issue, um, we'll start scheduling interviews because when I get a, a questionnaire back, I reach out to the employee and we have a discussion about their questionnaire. They answer any questions I have. I formulate a draft job description, send it to the employee, the employee and the supervisor review it, get back to me, let me know any suggestions that they have. It's a very interactive process. Um, I don't tell people what they do, they tell me what they do. And we quantify that for them in their job description. So I would suggest that if we do not receive any questionnaires back by the 20th, that we go forward with um, sample job descriptions and I will schedule interviews for employees um, who have returned job descriptions beginning on the 22nd through the 29th. Mm -hmm. Those interviews that's, will be conducted. That sounds, that sounds good. That's reasonable. Okay. And then for employees who after the 20th have not submitted. So if you have submitted your questionnaire, you'll have a discussion with me and we'll have an interview and go forward in that way. If you have not submitted your questionnaire, what you will receive is a sample job description to review. And then you can make any changes that you need to or you'd like to, and we can try to schedule a conversation after you've submitted some feedback from that sample job description. Okay, that sounds good. It's not like a plan. Okay. That's good. I'll make one more effort to, uh, now that I have your uh, most recent update, uh, we can target people who just haven't submitted yet and uh, make one more effort there and then if that, uh, anyone who hasn't submitted, basically, we'll use the other process. Okay. Okay, that sounds great. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Well, thank you for letting us be of service to the yeah. town. Thank you. Have a good thank evening. You. Have a good evening. You too. Special town meeting warrant. Bob? I have it. Do uh, you want me to just nothing. scroll it up? See if yeah, right. just, just quickly. Nothing's changed, right? Nothing's changed. Okay. Although I did add um, motions, and we're going to use this particular version for those who are on the board of selectmen, the advisory committee, and so forth. Uh, those who attend are, are going to get the uh, basically just just the uh, warrant itself but i have yeah. the motions. i also have added the names of uh the individuals who are going to be offering the motion so let me scroll right. up. don don one quick question though since we got the email about the fema thing should we maybe have a discussion about reconsideration on that other article well uh <laughs> no or, or kick know. it around next kick it around next week in our finance discussion. Yeah, please. let's kick it around next week. Okay. Yeah. So here we are. Can everyone see this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, please cruise. Motion by Selectman Finn uh, Flynn. Um, we still have it at twenty five and twenty five. I know that's a matter for some discussion. I guess remaining discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
Article two, hazardous trees. Blackman Glover. It's a hundred thousand. I guess there's also some question um, or disagreement as to where that should come from, whether it's raise and appropriate or whether uh, we uh, take it from. Right, the, the amount. The amount is locked in. But the amount. Yeah. This is uh, the removal of the uh, solar uh, moratorium. We need a report from the planning board and also a two thirds majority and the planning board will offer this motion. At the, at the planning board meeting I attended last month, they both they voted in favor of both articles, which is the statutory requirement for the town meeting. Right. And this is the, uh, the longer article having to do mm -hmm. with amending the zoning code to permit ambulance services uh, within the town, two thirds majority planning board report and the planning board will offer the motion. Conservation fund, Selectman Flynn, thousand dollars. I Current thought that was going to be, I'm sorry, I thought that was gonna be one of the CONCOM. I thought we gave that to Ted or something. Uh, I took this from, uh, from the moderator's list. I can uh, easily change it. Yeah, typically we like CONCOM. Con yeah. Right, I can change that. Okay. I'm not gonna be there. Oh. I guess that explains it. Bonnie? No. Okay. If we see any CONCOM members, they can author. Otherwise, one of us will stand up and do it. Okay. There you go. Uh, pilot authorization. Selectman Davenport. Fire department, fire department, that's open for discussion yet, so we'll. Okay. All right. What else we got on there? I think the rest were the typical um, the money transfer money. back and forth, except for raising appropriate for the yeah. reserve plan should be on there. Right. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. All right. So Transfer to the general stabilization. Yeah. And reducing the tax rate. Yeah. All right. Um, one of the issues, uh, I guess it comes to the front burner now is uh, if you saw the message that uh, FEMA has not funded the request uh, of our fire department for uh, the ventilation system. Right. <clears throat> and and I, uh, I, I sent a email to the fire chief. Uh, I mean, we, we talked about last, last week, we talked about looking at, at other alternatives and about looking at the, uh, 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 other other costs and things that can be done, uh, you know, do mm -hmm. not just to settle on the sixty thousand dollar number. And I sent an email to the fire chief asking him about about again about what his feeling was in the fire department, uh, uh, fire departments uh, moving to the trail or something like that. So that's something I think we need to discuss next week. We have time yet, so. All right, so that's the warrant. And hopefully things will go forward without any further delays in the town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, next item on the agenda we have is the dispatch update. Uh, basically the update is that uh, we, we've sent over to the uh, Wilbraham Board of Selectmen to their, to their uh, town administrator, the uh, edited draft that I did of mm -hmm. the uh, potential contract between the two towns, if we were to go with them, uh, they'll look it over. They've asked that I uh, call into their meeting next Monday, uh, which I'll take a, which I will do. 
and uh, we'll move forward from there. I was, I was not, um, I knew that at the last meeting we had said that you would go forward to the um, town administrator in Wolverham, but I didn't know that we were going to share the, um, the, the revised or recommended contract. And I, I was concerned because we had had no discussion of the contract. Um, we've seen it, okay, but I haven't discussed it with anybody and I don't know if, if you have, Don or John has. Um, and it seems to me that before we, before their selectmen see it, our selectmen should have had a discussion of it. Well, but, I sent it to But I since it didn't it happen. Everyone. Yeah, I, I saw it. it. I did see it. I and I read it. it. Excuse me, go ahead. And you have any, <laughs> in, in, I mean, and if you have any input for it, any changes? Well, I thought there were several things we could discuss. I mean, I didn't think that what I what I think is is just one third of the of the group here, but I did you know I did see some things that I thought could be discussed. But I mean, it just seems to me that we should have had a discussion first and then go forward to the, their board, because then what we're really doing if we go forward to their board is negotiating this thing. They're going to say, well, I like this, I don't like that, or whatever, and then we've, we're on a whole nother, another level, it seems to me. The Gentile is just uh, asked to be admitted to the meeting. Yeah. One point, uh, Don, I thought really what you did here, relevant to the what you discussed before, you really did a lot of the Hamden Warbraham editing in the document. Right. You know, this is really pretty similar to what you shared with the board two weeks prior to this, except for, it's like you say, town name cleanup, et cetera. And and I added and I added a an advisory yeah. board, right? Uh, Which on well, the recommendation of uh, last the last meeting, I thought. Right. The advisory board was in the last uh, the last one you sent to us. Right. Um, and, Delineated and, better. And, and and I don't know that there was a discussion of that. And I don't I, I don't know. It just it, that's just for going forward. It's already been done, so there's nothing we can do about it. But I I just think that it's a lot of it was housekeeping. You know, Hamden and moving him and that kind of stuff was certainly. A lot of it there were, um, but you didn't, it didn't seem to me that um, um, it, it was a product of the three of us. It didn't, that's what I guess what I said. No, there are, there is one air and Shirley left in there, uh, Don. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the last page. Yeah. Well, we, we sent it over to give them a feeling about what we're thinking about in terms of. Of, mm -hmm. of, of a shared agreement, you know, 50-50. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we'll see what they say. Sure. Let's open it up. If they're yeah. not interested, that's fine too. Right. You know. Okay. So hopefully ne so next week we're going to have our discussion. I my suggestion to the board would be we have that financial discussion early so that you yep. as the chair can then attend the Wolverine meeting. Okay. Yeah. I would, I would think you can't have a financial discussion until you have a management structure in place. I know, that's why we sent it over to them. So yeah. no, but, no, no, but that is, no, that is one piece mis of this. And no, I you think misunderstand. That, you what? misunderstand what I said. The financial discussion is about our town meeting. Oh, our town meeting, yes. Absolutely, yeah, right. we have our town meeting. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. I would agree with that. So what, what, is, your, what is your thinking that we need a, we need a contract for I'm to, I, what? Go, John. Go, Don. Oh no, I'm trying to find what. What? How do you think it should well, be? Well, I th I think we have one. We have one sample contract that we're going from. I don't know that this is the best sample contract. I don't know that there are other contracts that could be better because we haven't even looked at that. I don't know that we have gone through, you know, each of these various statements um, to say that yes, okay, are we all in agreement with that? Yes, we are. No, we're not. Change it like this. How about that? Could we do this? That kind of a thing. I think without firm written agreements, things fall apart. I said, we just got a letter on dispatch, a, a memo on dispatch about from the, um, from action. So, you know, it seems to me that we can do a better job at that. That's all, but, but, but it's, it's done. So I, I don't, we don't have to beat a, beat a dead horse here, except that I just, I just, it isn't the way I would have done it. And I, and I'm not sure that it's the way it's the appropriate way to do it. Didn't we say last week we were going to send it to them? No, we did not. No, we did not. We said that we would look for a man. We would discuss with them the concern about management. That's what we said. We and we said you would, Mister, you and you and Marco would go and discuss with them. That's what we said. That's what I said. 
And we, but again, again, one of the problems is that when you don't have motions and you don't have seconds, you really don't have a clear direction. So you, you could have heard it one way and I could have heard it another way. So that's why we have to start having motions. Which we is did another make a motion. Excuse yeah. me, we did make a motion. We motioned that Don would be the guy to reach out and have a discussion with Wolverham about this. Well, I can go back. I can go back and look at the Zoom, but I, I thought first of all, I thought it was Don and, and Bob Markle because I remember saying Bob Markle. Right. And then, so and then, that. pardon me. So we did have that motion. No, I don't. I remember having that discussion. It was a in my, in my mind, but it, it it may have been a motion. I I will double check it. Okay. You may Thank you. you may be correct. And that's happened once this month. Pardon me. No. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So so. It's over there. We'll see what they have to say, and I will. In next week, I'll we'll have our financial meeting about the uh, the our budget, and then I'll give a call over to there. Right. All right. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the conservation commission appointment, which we said we would bring up again this week. And uh, let me let me just say this about that that uh, I don't know if the Conservation Commission members are on or not, but whether the, whether, okay, well, well, whether the Conservation Commission is aware or not, uh, your recommendation or appointment to the commission presents a real catch-22 for the Board of Selectmen. You know, as I'm sure the Conservation Commission is well aware that the recommended appointee has a pending lawsuit against Hamden Parks and Recreation, Commission, the town of Hamden, the former town administrator, and the previous board of selectmen. So we're in a position where if, uh, in fact, we do vote to appoint this person, this recommended cash in, uh, there's a potential that that action would be viewed as some type of admission that the previous actions by the town officials were somehow not proper. And, uh, and that's, uh, not proper, or it would be, or if we vote positively, it could be interpreted as somehow trying to influence the outcome of the pending litigation by offering the plaintiff a position. Conversely, if we voted negatively, that could be viewed as some sort of retaliation for the filing of a lawsuit and create an, yet another legal issue. So, so the board is in a, in a, in a very problematic situation. Uh, that said, it's my view that the best action the Board of Selectmen can take is to take no action at this time. Let the litigation run its course without interjecting any complicating factors, either positively or negative, negatively. I had requested a list of pending matters before the commission, which were, they provided, uh, graciously provided, and I recognize the commission as a fairly full agenda but I believe that taking no action on this particular appointment is the best course for all parties concerned. The commission is obviously free to present another candidate should that be done. And I would recommend no action. And, it, and in that way, it, it, it does not reflect negatively on the applicant, nor does it in any way uh, undermine any, uh, any rights that we have, the town has in litigation. That's my position. I, I would I would agree that no action is 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 the appropriate course of action to take, um, for the reasons that you have stated, um, and I think that um, if the commission feels that they I, I appreciated getting this list because I thought it was very informative that that um, Bonnie shared with us, um, and I think if the commission feels that they need um, more help or they can certainly bring forward another name. Um, which we would be um, more than willing to review. Uh, but I think for the where we presently stand, no action is the appropriate action. And if you'd like a motion, I would make that, or if we want to hear from John, or whatever you think is appropriate. Well, I don't think you need a motion of no action. I think what we did last week is the same action. The same as no action, okay. Right. Okay. No, no, no Are you motion in brought forward. And, I, and think are you I think for the reasons Don uh, went through. I'm recusing myself on this. All right. So, 
I, if, if, if it's the consensus of the board that there be no action, then uh, we'll take no action at this time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, then, then under new business, we have a discussion and recommendation for use of the free cash. I, I put this on uh, because I wanted to discuss with the board the current I believe the current plan or plan or thought right now is that the $435,640 in free cash would be uh, uh, would be spent roughly $207,000 to return to the stabilization fund. Uh, first of all, they would raise and appropriate $112,000, $100,000 for the for the trees. Twenty thousand dollars for to put into the reserve of mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, uh, advisory committee, and one thousand dollars for the conservation commission. The remainder would be two hundred seven thousand dollars would be uh, taken out of free cash to put into the stabilization fund. Uh, Thirty eight thousand dollars would be used to lower the the uh, tax rate, mm -hmm. and the remainder of the money would be used to uh, uh, lower short-term debt. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't understand why, I, I just don't think we, when we went to the town meeting in May, we said that whatever free cash we would have, we would use to take care of the things like the trees and the reserve fund and that. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think we should raise $112,000 and give people back $38,000 of that. I think there's other alternatives we can do and without raising an appropriate any more money. So. And I sent a list of those. Uh, I, I sent a list of those. And like one of the things I would suggest is we could put $200,000 into the stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. We could put $100,000 for the trees from the, from the free cash. Mm -hmm. we, could, uh, we could do $20,000 for the uh, reserve fund, $1,000 for the conservation fund. Mm -hmm. And then we would have some uh, money left over to put to reduce the short term debt. And mm -hmm. that way we would not raise an appropriate any more money. And but I think your, your scenarios, Don, were really good. I think part of what we're talking about here, though, is the levy limit. And that's where I think uh, Dick and the advisory and Cliff were basing the raise and appropriate part to keep our levy, levy limit moving where it needs to move and then offset that with, as you said, free cash. You go back to May, and then we were looking at free cash to be conservatively an extra two hundred fifty or three hundred thousand dollars more than we're seeing right now. But because of actions at the state not getting their job done in time by the close of the fiscal year, some of that money is going to be in the current fiscal year's free cash. Good for next year, bad for this year. I really would like to hear, as you said, their rationale for their spin on it, if you will. And I think it's a good opportunity for next week, that good frank discussion. Hey, with what we have before us, the whole first hour can be taken up with this. It's just hard not being all in the same room. Well, explain to me, I, I don't explain the concept of, maybe I don't understand, the concept of raising and appropriating $112,000 and giving then 30, giving $38,000 of it back to because <laughs> the tax rate. Yeah. Um, you know, and same thing, and I see Cliff is making a comment there, but it has to do with the levy limit, as I understand from both the assessors. Uh, so their, their belief this, is that the higher we can, the higher we can raise the levy limit, the higher taxes we can raise. Is that, I mean, I don't think that's what our job we is. We lost you, Don. No, I haven't. Uh, no, I don't think that's the, that's the full concept. And that's why I'd like a chance for them to get that frank discussion coming forward. Again, we don't make a, we have to make that closure right now. Don, you presented four really good scenarios for how we work with the money. Let's have that discussion with everybody in the room next week. I think you've got, you've got four good plans. Why isn't plan A instead of plan B? Why isn't C instead of D? Okay. All right. All right. Again? Yeah, and then, and can you make just, their, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Don, can you just clarify for me? Is the responsibility for how you use this money fall primarily on the advisory committee, on the board of selectmen, or on both of us jointly together? 
I've lost you, John. My interpretation of the bylaws, it really comes under the advisory. But it, okay. But we can, but, but, the, board never, select, but the board uh, of selectmen, oh. can, sir, but the board of selectmen can certainly make a recommendation saying, we believe this is the way you should do it. And they can make any recommendation we want. Exactly right. And it's been very rare. Right. There's been dispute between the two. There's you might a, go back to, uh, okay. you know, Lester Pauly or, or, you know, boards back in the day. I mean, they're meant to be financial guardians. We see the bigger picture, if you will. And hopefully the two groups come together and agree. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. But it's easier to have the discussion if everybody's together. Okay. And, I just wanted, I just you, wanted to be sure. And then you shake, we're, your, then you we're, shake your virtual we're, hands and say thank you and we go <laughs> to the town meeting. Right, right. And is this a decision that has to be made now or can it be made in the spring? Well, technically, you try and, so to yeah. speak, get rid of free cash yeah. before you set the tax rate. Do you absolutely have okay. to? No, but you've lost the ability then to modify the tax rate. I okay. mean, the money doesn't go away. We will have it. Right. We so the reason you have it is that hopefully you can offset some costs and thereby bring, free, bring the tax rate down and pay for things that otherwise would have been against taxes. And it probably wouldn't be worth doing that just to get more information from the state because this, who knows when the state will give you any information, right? You know what I mean? For any, I don't think we're waiting for any state information no, at this point. But you, yeah. know, you know how much we need our money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can we reduce anything if they cut all if they cut their, their funding? It's, Wouldn't that impact good, us? Good, good point. Fortunately, as I think Cliff has uh, said before, the cherry sheet number, and that's an old term, Don, right. you recall that, um, is not such a big part of our budget. Uh, if they did a and gosh, I can remember ten percent cut one time. Bob, you probably recall I see something. cuts, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that uh, the cherry sheet number that comes to the town represents maybe five percent of our revenue. Oh, okay. okay. So if they cut that's really right. anything of it, that's not a hard number. What would be a hard number Re is that I think we talked about before. If they cut the school funding, the school, the school funding, that would be uh, that would. Be I was thinking thing. the school funding. Now they've made the guarantee. Well, a guarantee and 50 cents will get you that cup of coffee. Right. You know, so like I said before, that's great that the state is guaranteed funding the schools. Let's see the check clear and then we give them the big thumbs up. Right. 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 So but this needs anyhow. to be settled by, by town meeting in October because we'll then be setting the tax rate. Mm -hmm. uh, free cash use is not so important as deciding how much will be raised and appropriated. Right. That will directly impact the tax rate. Mm -hmm. right. We can free cash to mitigate that. Yeah, mitigating. That's, yeah. The, yeah. that's the job of the two boards together. I think okay. we can so, yeah. So we can set up a meeting next week, Bob. Everybody, everybody I already have it on the agenda Bob. for next week. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the only other thing we have is town administrator's report. <clears throat> okay. The Amoresco project is on hold until Mass Fish and Wildlife issue a decision on whether they will accept Amoresco's proposal uh, for mitigating the Rare Species uh, Act. Uh, as you know, uh, Amoresco has said uh, that as is asking the town to set aside nine acres adjacent to their project um, with a conservation restriction so that the displaced rare species will have a habitat. Mm -hmm. They're also proposing that instead of uh, actually setting aside 12.2 acres, which is what mm -hmm. Fish and Wildlife initially requested, that the other three acres, 3.2 acres, uh, be covered by a contribution to the mitigation fund. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have acceptance of that yet mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. Fish and Wildlife. And so the conservation restriction that the, the Board of Selectmen uh, will have to accept on behalf of the town uh, can't go forward. So we hope that sooner rather than later, we get a decision from Mass Fish and Wildlife. But I can tell you uh, having to deal with state agencies on somewhat regular basis that everything is going in low gear right now because offices are, are really not operating. So. I don't know when this is going to happen. Secondly, we did have our meeting uh, regarding the highway garage project with the architect. 
he came up with some uh, trimming of the project, but even with his proposed reductions in the scope, uh, we were still in the range of seventy to eighty thousand dollars above the budget that the town has approved. Uh, I think what happens now is that we put this on the agenda, and the selectmen will have to decide whether to make a further reduction in the scope of the project, or whether to wait until spring and approach town meeting for the additional uh, some sum of money. What might be at stake here is a bay where vehicles can be washed inside during the winter. Uh, most highway departments will tell you that they think that that's very important because it extends the life of vehicles. They need to wash the salt off, especially uh, from those vehicles that are out during snow events. And if they don't wash the salt off, as we all know, it corrodes and so having the ability to wash inside in freezing weather uh, is in the long-term interest of the town. And that might be at stake in this whole garage project. So we'll have to get that on the agenda for the selectmen to have a discussion on. Do you wanna do it next week or do you wanna wait till following? Bob, Bob, last week we voted to reject the bids and go right, back yes. to work. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so you we'll wait. We'll wait. Go ahead. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. We, we the, the bids existing bids are rejected. We're back to square one. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Next item is Halloween. Oh, yeah. and I did send you <laughs> today. <laughs> nice. Uh, an update on what towns across the Commonwealth are doing. Mm -hmm. And um, no decision means that we're going to have Halloween. Uh, if you're going to change that, I guess we can do it on the 19th. So, no. uh, I heard from, uh, I did hear from our three regional partners. Uh, again, none of them have made any hard decisions, i.e. No, no witches and ghosts on the, on the streets, but their recommendation, everybody be smart, you know, go by the guidelines. I know that there are some residents who live adjacent to bordering communities who are concerned that if the bordering community prohibits Halloween, that uh, folks from those bordering communities are going to come into Hamden if we have Halloween. And so there'll be an extra burden. So that's a factor. Uh, we also need to put on the agenda the issue of uh, Pondview Drive. Uh, the individual uh, sent a recent message asking the town uh, to arrange to deed, deed some small amount of property. Um, you're familiar with, with this. Uh, no. Can we go to the agenda for this next week or? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I, I would do a little research. I think I, I was going to do more research. Yeah. Yeah, I emailed the board that in the past, when these are what are called paper streets yeah. that were never yeah. actually accepted by the town, yeah. typically the land is divided between the two abutters. And I would ask the planning board, you talk, if you talk to uh, the judge or John Matthews, they'll recall there were some on okay. Raymond Drive, uh, there were some on um, Echo Valley, that type of thing. And typically, if they never got done and they weren't part of the town acceptance of the road, an action of the, the town could be to just to divide it between the two abutters and done. Yeah. But okay. we have plenty of historical ones we've done in the past. Yeah. So. Next item, you're sure you're aware that our quarantine policy is in effect. Mm -hmm. uh, town hall is closed until the 19th because we've had several instances of positive tests. Um, but we've had no additional one since the closing, right? No, I did send out a message today to all uh, employees asking if anyone has tested positive. Uh, I don't have a response yet. I'll let you know if I do. But uh, the plan is that uh, uh, I've asked all employees to be tested last week when we closed. Um, mentioned this testing center at Eastfield Mall, which is quick 
easy, free, and you don't even have to get out of your car. Um, they give you dinner. <laughs> the American one. Ask them to be retested <laughs> this week, towards the end of this week, so that when we open next week again on Monday, mm -hmm. uh, people will be able to come in with, uh, you know, a negative test to, to assure us all that we're all going to be safe. So what's so, that doing for the early voting, Bob? What's the plan? I mean, that was scheduled to start this week, right? Right. So I did ask the town clerk if she wants me to uh, post on the website any policies there. Um, obviously, you can you can. I I think I think she's I think she's going to the early voting is going to take place in the auditorium, just like we did, John, for the town election, because we were still okay. closed. Then. And so she got the same procedure, yeah. Okay, so in and out, just circle through. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good. And did you-, well, did I, you I'm not sure if you're gonna post something tomorrow, because I haven't, I haven't talked with her in the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. As we get close to the early voting, uh, I guess we need to get the message out there, maybe a robocall too. Yeah, yeah did you people are concerned. They heard the town hall was closed. So I think they're, they want to be sure the message is yes, but voting is still open. Did, um, Bob, did you, did you get to check on, um, several people have received uh, absentee ballot um, envelopes from Hamden and they're concerned, they didn't request them and they're concerned as to why they're getting them. Um, I suggested that they call Eva, but I wondered if we knew anything about that. I do not other than she told me that she was getting 1500 ballots to ma mail out from the Commonwealth. And this was in, in conjunction with our discussion about town hall being closed and so forth. Um, this is something I think uh, will get resolved tomorrow. It's 15, the, the 1500 ballots went out before, but this is what, these are ones that just came and they are the, abs they, they are the regular absentee ballots that you oh. get. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't talked. And I had, I had, I had four calls of people that got them as all. Well. So she might want to figure out why they got them and what, what to do about it. I don't know anything. About and I, I, and I received, I received five, five people spoke to me about it. Yeah, and I also did too. And I'd like to clarify from the people: did they come from the town, or I'm concerned when you talk about all these absentee ballots sent to us from the state? Did the state do some mailing out on their own? Yeah, I know. Trying I know. to be, you know, I like to see, the, I see the actual envelope, so. But you're sure it's not the Russians. That's the key part, right? I know. <laughs> Maybe the Chinese. Um, uh, okay, you know, I think we can be pleased mm -hmm. that uh, we're able to continue the operations of town government uh, while the employees are uh, working remotely. And, and so we've made sure that Every town employee who needs access to the server uh, has a connection, a VPN connection and a laptop. And so mm -hmm. um, I think that we are about as normal as we possibly can be mm -hmm. in terms of continuing town services. Yeah. Uh, what's really important right now that I'm working on is this new round of reimbursements for COVID-19 expenses. Uh, it's, it's a lot of bureaucracy, both in the filing as well as a, kind of a nightmare to get all that information together from each department. But we, we are entitled and eligible for reimbursement for those expenses. And I want to make sure that we get every penny that uh, we deserve. So, exactly. um, and, and that's the report, uh, Mr. Chairman. We have a special town meeting on the 26th. Department heads meeting on the 21st, and your next meeting is Monday the 19th at six. Anything else to come before the committee? Um, I, I just wanted to mention. I just wanted to mention um, the fire department survey that we were going to take, and Bob and I talked about this a while ba back. And we were going to we had we had to have some discussion of whether we would send it out with tax bills or whatever. I don't know one. Bob said that we had approved it at the town meeting. I don't exactly recall that, and I didn't have time to, to look that up. But he did draft a, a, a rough draft of a thing, and he suggested that we do it at election on election day, to set up a table there, and anybody going by could could fill out one. Um, I don't know if, if 
if we did pass it at the town meeting, then we probably should do it. And I don't know if you want to continue to do it or not do it, or it's not timely now and we do it in the spring. You know, I don't care. But if we're going to do it at this town meeting, or we're going to do it at this voting, we should. Um, is, is that the one you had in our meeting like three weeks ago? Yeah. When we yeah. talked about it to you yeah. for the next meeting. We talked about including it in the stride, I thought, so it would get to every household yeah. in town. And then we said, and then we said, then we said include it in the scribe. And then um, Bob had some concerns that you really can't control who fills it out when you do it in the scribe. And the other problem is, unless we add a stamped envelope, uh, I think it would cut into the number of people who would actually do the survey. Uh, I think we can get the maximum amount of input from the town uh, if we do this on election day and provide a, a brief explanation. Actually, I'll, I'll go and do it myself up there and have some assistance. Okay, that confuses me there because you're saying on election day, so we expect them to stand there, fill out the thing when we're really in the, I thought really trying to move the people through quickly because we're yeah. still concerned about so I don't think having them stand there for an extra 10 minutes filling out a survey is the message we want to send. So they take it home, then we have the same concern, how do they return it? So the other thing is that we could wait till the spring and maybe in the spring things have lightened up and you know it's a better time to do it and do it during spring voting or do it you know yeah. in some other, for, some other fashion. Um, oh, I, I think you've done a good job laying it out. I think, I think you, you said before, Mariela, Let's use the web. Just ask people, look, if you have an opinion, sign your name. You know, put your name on it and send it back to us. It shouldn't matter that much. There's no harm, no foul to it. So put it on the web, put copies out, tell them there's a, Gary will give us a Dropbox at his place, a Dropbox at the senior center outside, throw it in the library thing, just but give you, us information you do, you back. Do have to be, you do have to be careful that it's, that it's gonna be accurate if you're gonna use it, okay, number one. Mm -hmm. And number mm -hmm. two, the, the, the form that that um, that uh, Bob started with is is really pretty simple. There's three questions, four questions, and it's just yes or no. It wouldn't take but two seconds to you know. It wouldn't take a long time unless they wanted to write us a diatribe on the back of it or something. Um, so maybe we want to think about it. How about that? We think about it. We come up with a plan or whatever whatever you the chairman thinks is the best routine to go. All right, to. let's think about it. Uh, I'm just concerned that if we mail something like a survey, people are not going to put, not going to probably even take the time, let alone find a stamp and so forth, to send it back. <laughs> right. Use or That's what I thought the drop boxes. I mean, and we, I should think... be we should be really in the mood for drop boxes right now after all the talk <laughs> in the past two months. Well, <laughs> and the phony boxes they're putting up for. <laughs> In Ballot. California, seriously. There you go. <laughs> um, I just want—I 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 want to go back to a question that John asked about where the where the ballots came from. One of the people uh, texted in the chat thing that uh, it came from the town clerk. The one they're on mm -hmm. the call and they said it came from the town clerk. Okay. Good. I was—I was, was going to say the same thing, and from what I what okay. I saw, it said state state official ballot, and then the town clerk's label was on it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, so it had both things done. Yeah. So you wonder if a they're going off by mistake, I'm sure or, that way. or phony requests are going in, and that's worrisome too. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You don't know. Right. right. You don't. Know. Right. Okay. So Bob is going to check with Eva. Okay. Anything? Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Motion to adjourn. Okay. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. Aye. Be safe. Aye. Thank you. Bye now.